Welcome to the MBCPA Black History Month podcast series. Today, we are absolutely delighted to be joined by Benjamin Aynar, King's Counsel. Ben has been a practising barrister for 35 years. In 2008, he was appointed by the Attorney General as Standing Counsel to Revenue and Customs. And in 2009, he was appointed as King's Counsel. He was also called to the Cayman Islands Bar in 2010. Ben is of African origin. He grew up in a one-parent family in a council flat in North London in the early 70s. His mother was a dinner lady for the Metropolitan Police. And when Ben was 11 years old, he was fortunate to be part of an ILEA experiment, which sent him to a boarding school near Ipswich and Wolverstone Hall. Ben is a lifelong member of the Pentecostal Church of Peckham. When Ben was 13 years old, his mother left the UK for Africa and he was fostered by a white East End family. During the school holidays between the ages of 13 and 18 years of age, um, Ben um, undertook a number of different jobs. He was a kitchen porter, a house porter, a cleaner in a meat factory, a sausage maker, a hoe cobbler, um, and he also cleaned ladies' jewellery in addition to being a building labourer. When he started his first degree at the Chalmar Institute of Higher Education, which is now called the Angela Ruskin University, Ben worked as a a parking attendant on a Saturday. He used the funds from this job to pay for his LLM at the London University, which commenced in 1986. Between 1986 and 1989, he lectured law of evidence, company law and administrative law at the Polytechnic of Central London. And since taking silk, Ben has prosecuted and defended in over 50 homicide cases. He has also prosecuted a number of high profile sexual offence cases. Ben was appointed a special counsel to the governor of the Cayman Islands in 2008. Ben, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I, I'm going to be interviewing, asking questions and um, Be- Ben, uh, the first question is, what does Black History Month mean to you? Black History Month is another opportunity for black people to showcase our achievements in this country, to show black people in a positive light and to counter the negative image which is so often portrayed by the press of black youth. It is also an opportunity to show that black people are not just good at sport or music, but we have academic and professional ability as well. Brilliant, Ben. Um, I'm gonna ask you the second question. Um, This year's Black History Month theme is time for change, action, not words. What does this look like for you as a person of colour? Well, when I came to the bar 35 years ago, there was a handful of black Afro-Caribbean male silks, uh, no Afro-Caribbean men who sat as judges. I was told that things would change uh, and there have been many kind words over the years uh, and many well-intentioned initiatives. But the reality is that 35 years on, little has changed in practice for black Afro-Caribbean men in the law. There are still only a handful of black Afro-Caribbean men who are silks. And I think on last uh, investigation, only two black Afro-Caribbean men in the whole country who sit as circuit judges. And none of those two males are in London. There still remain no black Afro-Caribbean men who are high court judges. There are no black Afro-Caribbean men who have been made Treasury Council. And so kind and well-intentioned words and well-intentioned initiatives are sadly making absolutely no difference in practice. And I find this to be a very worrying trend. Therefore, your motto, time for change, action, not words, is very apt. On a positive note, the number of female Afro-Caribbean silks is improving. 
and there is significant improvement in diversity for women among the judiciary. We have even had a female Afro-Caribbean High Court judge. Thank you. The next question. Some people think that the bar is not a very welcoming place for people of colour. What are your thoughts on that? How can we make the bar more inclusive? I think the first thing that one must acknowledge is that the bar is an elitist profession. Therefore, it is not surprising that many will find it difficult to adjust to what is sometimes an atmosphere of arrogance and the British class system at its worst. This is not unique to people of colour. However, it is felt more acutely by people of colour because we do not have role models that we can look to and discuss simple questions such as how did you manage it? This is something which is so often overlooked by white people. Merit is often described in terms of academic achievement, forgetting that lawyers are often engaged in problem solving for a diverse community. How is a diverse community to have trust in a legal system when it does not see any Afro-Caribbean men as judges or senior prosecutors. This just perpetuates a them and us culture. If you like, in schoolboy terms, um, a, a monitor system for one and junior punishment system for others. I'm afraid change does not come voluntarily. There is need for principal pressure groups. I think we need organisations like the MBPCA to spread its tentacles to the defence bar. It is only when there is a strong voice for Afro-Caribbean lawyers that there will be true inclusivity. You cannot expect a handful of black lawyers in any organisation to persuade the majority to be inclusive. The handful of black lawyers themselves are under severe pressure to conform to the will of the majority. They themselves are under pressure to not lose the position they've worked so hard to gain. What, why should the majority voluntarily change or budge from a status quo which is favourable to them? That is not human nature. I think it was Marcus Garvey who said that crops do not grow without the wind and the rain sometimes sweeping across a field torrentially. I, I think we need lawyers of colour who know that when they speak, they have a powerful association behind them. That will significantly encourage change and inclusiveness. Thanks for that insight, Ben. And can I ask you, what has been your proudest achievements? I think being made standing counsel for Revenue and Customs Prosecution Office, that was by Patricia Scotland, Queen King's Counsel, when she was Attorney General. That had not been achieved before by an Afro-Caribbean man. Thank you, Ben. What is the best piece of advice someone has given you? Always be as courteous as you can. What makes you a good human being is not your professional achievements or how good you are in court, but how you treat other people. To speak with kind and courteous words. To try hard not to speak with arrogance or look down on people that you might meet during the day job. I have to confess it's a journey which I am personally still trying to achieve. Brilliant. Ben, um, thank you for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.